Hey, hey, I am Cho from Rubber Mountain, and I am here as your moderator. I'll be the one in chat, so you won't see me up here. That'll actually be Maggie. She's going to teach you all about matter. But um, just a few notes as we're going. We're going to keep cameras and um, microphones off. And any questions or feedback, you can just do that right there in the chat with me. And um, yeah, so here comes Maggie to talk to you about matter. Joe, and welcome everyone. We are so glad to have you here, even if it is just virtually. Uh, my name is Maggie Connolly, and I'm going to be talking to you today about the three main states of matter and their properties. Now, throughout this program, I'm probably going to ask you to make some predictions or to make some guesses, and you can keep those in your head, right? And then at the end, or you know, as we go along, we'll revisit those and we can see if you were right or not. So, to start with, I wonder. Does anyone here know any of the three states of matter? If you know one or two or three, you can put them in the chat, or if you just want to think about them up here, that's fine too. So if you thought about a solid, liquid, and a gas, you would be correct. Those are the three main states of matter, and we are going to visit each state. We're going to talk about their properties, but before we do that, we are going to do a really cool experiment over this way. So this is what we call a leaky faucet, and you might ask, well, why is it called a leaky faucet? I'm going to show you. No worries. Um, down here at the bottom, we do have some liquid, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a solid, okay? I'm going to give you a close-up look at this solid real quick. I can get it out of our container. There we go. We can zoom in on that. Or focus, I should say. So this is the solid that we're going to add. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but I am going to tell you at the end, so don't worry about that. All right, so we're going to add our solid to the liquid. Then we're going to go ahead and put this lid back on. We're going to add our, or we're going to move our bucket. We're going to wait. And what we should start to see, any minute, ooh, should start to see some like steam. It kind of looks a little bit like fog that's coming out of our leaky faucet. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of the soapy water. And we'll see. Oh, sometimes it takes more than once. Almost had that one. Let's see. Lights taken. There we go. <laughs> so what do you see? We see all these bubbles and they're dripping just like if you had a leaky faucet at home and it was dripping water. But this time we're dripping bubbles. That's why we call it a leaky faucet. But this makes me wonder what state of matter is a bubble? So I want you to think about that, and we're going to come back to this at the end. Okay, so now let's talk about our three main states of matter. We're going to start talking about solids. So I have a solid right here. I have a Lego. And we're going to look at this on our uh, camera over here, get a closer look. Let's see. So here's my Lego. I stand it up for you. You just see it a little bit better. Solids have their own shape, so they have a definite shape. This Lego is going to stay its shape. If I put it in another container, like if I put it in this beaker, guess what? It still looks like a Lego. Solids also have their own volume. So if I put this right here, if I have a ruler, I could measure the length, the width, and the height and I can figure out the volume of this solid. Now, we're not going to do that today, but that's how you could. If you had a solid that was too big for this ruler, you could use a meter stick or a tape measure to do your measuring. So solids, again, they have their own definite shape, and the only way to change the shape is if we were to actually change it. So if I were to like break my Lego or I don't know, melt it down, but don't do any of those things if you have Legos. <laughs> okay, so all matter is made up of what we call molecules. And molecules are like the teeny, teeny, tiny little things 
that make up that matter. And all molecules move. So I wonder, do you think that solid molecules move really close together or really far apart? Hmm. Let's see. Let's be solid molecules. So you can take your hands. We can make a fist right here and a fist right here. Sorry, my head was itchy. There we go. <laughs> so to be solid molecules, they move really close together and pretty slow. So we're going to come together and we're going to move them slow. And while we're doing that, we can show you an animation of solid molecules. So you see those solid molecules moving. They're moving really slow and they're moving really close together. And that's how solid molecules behave. Because they're moving so slow that we can't see them, right? Like this Lego, you can't see the molecules moving. But they are just very, very, very slow. All right, so we said that um, with solids, something has to happen to change its shape. Let's talk about a different solid real quick. We're going to go over to my camera, my other camera. And this solid is a piece of ice. That's a solid, right? If I hold it up, I mean, you can hold it. I can hold it in my hand. If I put it in my beaker, it is still the shape of the ice. It hasn't changed its shape. And I could still measure it. I could use my ruler again to do my length, my width, and my height to find the volume. But to change this state of matter, we have to add something. We add heat. So if you add heat to ice, what happens to it? Well, it's going to melt and it is going to become a liquid. So I have a liquid right here. And we're going to talk about uh, the properties of liquids. Now, this is just water, but it's colored green, so you can see it a little bit better. So liquids, they do have their own volume, their definite volume. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let's talk about the shape first. So if I have this liquid in here, and then I pour it into here, what happened to its shape? Well, it took the shape of its container. So liquids do not have their own shape. They take the shape of whatever container they are in. But they do have their own volume, and we can measure that using a graduated cylinder, which we are going to do. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you to make a prediction. So I have two containers. This first container is container A, and the liquid is filled almost all the way to the top. So right here. And then I have container B, where the liquid is filled only halfway. And I want to know which container has more liquid. Is it container A, where it's filled almost all the way to the top? Or is it container B, where it's only filled halfway? So we can answer in the chat if you'd like. Or if you just want to make your prediction in your head, that's fine. But let's make a prediction and let's remember what our prediction is. Let's go over to our other camera and find out the answer. Okay. So first, let me spin these. We're going to get to those numbers in just a minute, but there we go. And let's put this. There we go. All right, so this is container one, or A, that has the liquid all the way almost to the top. This one is B, and if I move this, you can see it's only filled up about halfway. So in order to measure the volume of a liquid, we are going to look at where that liquid ends, and we're going to read that number. We're going to start with container A, and we're going to look. Can anyone read that number? If you can read that number, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. I will give you just a couple seconds. And if you said that, there was, that that number was 50, then you are correct. There are 50 milliliters of water in this container. That's container A. Let's look at container B. What number do we see here? Wait a minute, we see 50 again, the same number. So guess what? These two, we can change back to our other camera, thank you. These two have the same amount of liquid in them, but it looks different because they take the shape of their container. So this container that's a little bit smaller looks like there's more liquid in it. And this container that's bigger looks like there's less liquid, but it's actually the same. It's kind of neat. 
And we can also measure liquids using a thermometer. So we could put our thermometer into our liquid and measure the temperature. If we had a warmer liquid, we would have a hotter temperature. If we had a cooler liquid, we would have a colder temperature. Right. Now let's talk about our molecules moving. So does anyone remember what solid molecules did? If you do, you can do it with me. So we have our fist, our fist, we're gonna be solids. To be liquids, we are going to heat up a little bit. So we're gonna move our, our fist, excuse me, a little bit faster and a little bit further apart. So maybe something like this. And while we're doing that, we can show our animation of our liquids. So you can see that those molecules are moving a little bit faster and a little bit further apart but they still stay kind of contained, right? They don't just go all over the place because they have to stay contained in their container. All right, if we heat up liquids, what happens? If we heat up our water, eventually it's gonna evaporate and it's going to turn into a gas. So I wonder, I want you to make another prediction. Do gas molecules move really close together or really far apart? Also, do you think they move really slow or really fast? You can put those answers in the chat, or if you'd like, you can just keep them, keep them in here. Um, we're gonna take a look at that with my tea kettle. So right now my tea kettle has some water in it, and I'm gonna put it right here. And while we're waiting for this, let's talk about the properties of gases. So gases do not have their own shape, and they do not have their own volume. They take up whatever space that they can. So if you think about maybe being in your bedroom and it's just you and your stuff, your, you and your stuff are taking up a certain amount of space and the air is taking up the rest. If you added four friends into your room, we had five people in that room, you guys are gonna be taking up more space, which means that there is less space for the air to take up. So gases, again, they're just gonna take up whatever space that they can. But that doesn't mean that we can't measure certain things about gases, because if we were able to trap a gas, maybe in a balloon, we could look at something there. You can also measure the temperature of a gas, right? So we, we have these thermometers, and you can tell what temperature it is inside the room, or if you have one that's outside, you can tell what it is outside. So just because they don't have their own shape or their own volume, that doesn't mean that we can't do any measurements. We just have to do them a little bit differently. Ooh, but wait, do you hear that? What if I move over here and I kind of block that? Do you guys see the smoke? Can you hear this noise? Yeah, it's kind of annoying, right? All right, we don't have to listen to it anymore. But let's talk about what happened. So we had a liquid in here, and when we added heat to it, some of that liquid evaporated and turned into a gas. Let's think about how gas molecules move. So we put our fists together. Remember that we were solids like this. A little bit faster, a little bit further apart for liquids. Gases, make sure you don't hit anything, but gases go crazy and they go all over the place like this and they're super fast. So let's see that animation. So by watching those molecules, you can see exactly what I just said. They're moving really fast and they're going all over the place. It's exactly what they do. They take up as much space as they can. So the gas molecules that were in my tea kettle they're moving around and they're going really fast and they're just trying to escape this, this confinement, this container. They just wanna be out in the open. And the only place that they can get out is through this tiny hole right at the end of my tea kettle. And when a whole bunch of that gas goes out at once, that's when we get that steam. And that's also why we get that whistling noise. All right, I said if we trapped a gas that we could measure certain things about it. I do have two balloons that have, um, where I have trapped some gas, so let me grab those. All right, so I have these two balloons. One is actually quite a bit larger than the other. We are going to see which balloon is heavier by using our balance right here. So with the balance, I have these two cups and whichever side is heavier is going to be pushed down more. It's going to be like pulled down by that weight. So if I took this beaker that has some water in it and I put it right here, we can see that this side is going to be heavier, right? It's lower, which means there's more, there's more mass, there's more stuff. 
So let's do this with our balloons. One of my balloons has just the air that's surrounding us, and the other balloon has only carbon dioxide or CO2 gas. And let's see which one is heavier. So we're gonna put our big balloon right here. Sometimes this thing likes to fall off. There we go. Okay, let's try this one. Look at that. So even though this balloon is um, significantly smaller, it's actually heavier. Now, not by much. It's hard to tell, but it is heavier on here. And that shows us that CO2, or carbon dioxide, is heavier than the air that's around us. Now, I can think of a gas that's lighter than the air that's around us, and that would be helium. And I bet maybe at a birthday party, you might have gotten a helium balloon. And that's one of those where if you're holding on to it and you let it go, it's going to float up to the ceiling. And if you're outside and you let it go, it's just going to float away. Because helium is lighter than the air around us, but CO2 is heavier, so it kind of sinks. All right, so that is a little bit about solids, liquids, and gases. Now let's return to our leaky faucet and see if we can explain what happened. So remember, I had my liquid down here, and this is just water, so nothing too fancy. I will show you the solid that we added again to it. We can go to our other camera real quick. Perfect. So this solid is what we call dry ice. And dry ice is just frozen carbon dioxide. So, when we talked about our water and our ice at the beginning, remember we said that ice, when it melts, it turns into a liquid, it turns into water. And then when that gets more heat added to it, it turns into a gas. See, our dry ice, frozen CO2, skips the liquid phase and it goes straight from a solid to a gas. So, when we add this to our liquid, which again is just water, bubbling that's inside of here because that CO2 is changing from a solid to a gas. And that means that what's coming out here is CO2 or carbon dioxide gas. When I add my liquid, which is only soapy water, it's just soapy water, do this, let's see, again. Sometimes it might take a couple tries. There we go. So the soapy water, the liquid, surrounds and traps that CO2 gas, and it makes a bubble. But remember when we talked about how gas molecules move, and they go crazy, and they move around like this. So the CO2 that's inside that bubble is pushing on the liquid barrier, that liquid holder, and eventually it's going to push so much that it's going to cause the liquid to break, and the bubble pops. So we said that, um, or at the beginning I asked you what state of matter a bubble is. Bubble is actually two states. On the outside is the liquid coating, and then on the inside is a gas. All right, so that's a little bit about our solids, liquids, and gases. Now, if we have any questions, we can go ahead and put those in the chat. But while we're waiting on that, let's just review what we talked about today. So when we talk about solids, we say that solids have a definite shape and a definite volume. We talk about liquids. Liquids have a definite volume, but they take the shape of their container. And gases do not have a definite shape. They do not have a definite volume. They are going to take up just whatever space they can that's left over. So that is a little bit about solids, liquids, and gases. Um, if there are no questions, then I'm just gonna say that I hope you enjoyed uh, hanging out with us today. We do hope to see you back here at Roper Mountain soon, but until then, we are gonna continue to provide these uh, virtual lessons for you. Uh, so thanks for hanging out, and have a great rest of your day.